Hi there, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 10 for chapter 8. The topic is Fourier series and eigenvalue problems. Let's get started. We now introduce the eigenvalue problems. Let's take a first example. Let's consider the two-point boundary value problem as follows. So we have y double prime plus lambda y equals zero. Here lambda is a constant, a number, and y is a function of x. And then um, boundary values are given at um, x equals zero and x equal l, where l is just a constant. And here they are given as zero at the two boundary points. Um, I would like to call your attention to the boundary conditions. They are given as zero. And so these are called homogeneous boundary conditions. So for eigenvalue problems, we will always have homogeneous boundary values. So if one wants to solve this equation, equation star, where we call it, um, for some given lambda with these two boundary values, and then we see that immediately that y equals zero, constant zero, this three line means it's a constant zero, identically zero, is obviously a solution because then you have zero and zero, and then the boundary conditions are automatically satisfied, y zero, okay? So this is considered obvious and trivial. We call that a trivial solution, and usually we discard that one. So what we are interested in this problem is the following. We're interested in non-trivial solutions, solutions that are not identically zero on the interval. And the corresponding values of lambda that would give us non-trivial solutions. So that means not all lambdas, any constants, would give a solution. Only certain values of lambda will do that. Okay, so now if for certain value lambda we find a certain non-trivial solution y, then this lambda is called an eigenvalue and the function y, the solution, will be called the corresponding eigenfunction. Okay, so we just want you to um, flash back to um, what we have learned of eigenvalue and eigenvector for a square matrix. There are some um, similarities in these two definitions. Okay, so um, let's take this example and let's try to solve it. So we have these two point boundary value problems with homogeneous boundary conditions. And uh, let's try to see if we can find any eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. So assuming that a lambda is given, then the way to solve this problem is something we have learned previously in these lectures. We will construct the general solution. Um, then this solution would depend on the roots of the characteristic polynomial, which contains lambda here. And then the root of that would depend on, in particular, the sign of lambda. We see that there are three situations, basically um, lambda negative, lambda zero, and lambda positive. Let's go through them. So the first situation is when lambda is negative. So if lambda is negative, let's write lambda equal negative k square for some k strictly positive. Okay, then um, the characteristic polynomial becomes r square plus lambda is zero, lambda is negative k square, then it becomes r square equal k square. So this is the case that we have two real solutions, r1 is negative k and r2 is positive k. And then we can form the general solution as um, um, e to the kt, and then the second solution is e to the negative kt, and we make a linear combination. So c1 times the first solution plus c2 times the second solution. 
Next step is to use the two given boundary conditions to determine the constant C1 and C2. So if we put that in, y0 equals 0, then e to the 0 is 1. We have C1 plus C2 is 0. Um, I'm sorry, there's a typo. This shall be x, not t. That's my variable. Okay, and the second boundary condition is y at l equals 0. And then we put L here, and we have C1 e to the KL plus C2 e to the negative KL equals 0. And here we need to remember the condition A is strictly bigger than 0. Okay, So we have two unknowns, C1, C2, and we have two um, equations, linear equations, so we can solve. It's an easy exercise. You can um, put C2 to be negative C1 here, and you get negative C1, and then then you have C1 times a non-zero quantity equals zero, so C1 zero and C2 zero. So it's easy to find. Okay, so we have a solution C1 equals C2 equals zero. And then with those two values, we conclude that y equals zero, and that is a trivial solution. So we're not interested in that one, so we discard it. Okay, so um, the second situation is when lambda is zero. Then we have um, the equation becomes y double derivative is 0. So if a function that second derivative is 0, then we know it's a linear function, and the graph of it must be a straight line. And then with the zero boundary conditions, at 0 and at L, it's 0, and you connect those two points, then you see that the solution is identically 0. So again, this is a trivial solution, and we discard it. Okay, so let's hope the last case will be more interesting, non-trivial. So the last case is when lambda is bigger than zero. So let's write lambda equal k square, where k is square root of lambda, which assumed to be positive. Okay, then the characteristic equation becomes r square equal negative k square. And then we see we have two imaginary roots, r1, r2 will be plus minus ik. And then the solution will be sine and cosine. So cosine kx and sine kx, and a linear combination of them. So c1 times cosine plus a c2 times sine function. Now we need to check the boundary conditions and find uh, um, the values C1 and C2, if we can. So let's look at the first one, y0 equals 0. So what is y0? Cosine 0 is 1, we get C1, and sine 0 is 0, so we just get C1, so C1 must be 0. Okay, so if we put this condition in, that means uh, in the solution there's no cosine term, so the solution is just uh, C2 times sine. Now, with that in mind, then let's verify um, the second boundary condition to check. So y at l equals 0. So put x equal l, then we have c2 times sine kl equals 0. So we see that here we have two factors, c2 times sine kl equals 0, and then that gives us two um, possibilities. One is c2 is 0. And then the second is this sine function is zero. Okay, let's look at the first one. If we want C2 to be zero, then we see that Y just becomes zero, which is a trivial solution, and we discard. So there is only one case, the second one. Okay, so if we want non-trivial solution, then we must require C2 to be non-zero. To simplify the notation, we can just write C2 to be 1, because uh, if we find a solution with certain C2, then by linearity, multiply it by any number is a solution again. So without loss of generosity, we can um, just set C2 to be 1. Then we have the following requirement, sine of KL equals 0. So remember here, K is related to lambda where we are trying to find um, values of lambda, meaning values of k, such that this constraint is satisfied. Okay, so the k value must satisfy this constraint, 
and uh, we're familiar with the sine function. We know the sine function is periodic and it comes back and forth around the value zero in half period. In fact, if kl equals m pi for any integer n, then um, sine will be zero. So this gives us a condition on, on the k, that is kl must equal to m pi, which means k must equal to m pi over l, and this holds for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So we see that um, for the case where lambda is positive, we actually have found infinitely many, we call a family of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. Okay, let's write them out. Since there are many, then we can put an index, an eigenvalue number n, we can simply use this n as an index, and then the eigenvalue lambda n will equal this k square, so this k will be just kn because there are n's of them, and then that is n pi over l, the whole thing square, and the corresponding eigenfunction yn will be the sine function, and we set c2 to be 1, so we just have one in the front, so sine of kx, which will be m pi x over l, and for each values of n from 1 to 3 and to infinity. So our final remark will be that um, I want you to observe these eigenfunctions here. This is a family of sine function, and we see that they are precisely part of the trig set that we have used to form the Fourier series, and this is important. Okay, so um, that's all I want to say for this video, and uh, next time we will look at eigenvalue problems with uh, different types of um, boundary conditions, and which will lead to different um, eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.